Hello everyone and welcome to an updated tutorial on how to use the Airspace Editor for uh, Tracon 2012. In the uh, previous version of the tutorial I showed you how to use the editor to display a waypoint that was in the Tracon, Tracon 2012 database but wasn't displayed on the screen and also how to remove one from the map that you decided that you didn't want. In this tutorial, we'll review re both of those two procedures, but we'll also show how to add a waypoint that is uh, not in the database at all and therefore requires you to do a little bit of research. And I'll show you what tools are appropriate to do that research with, as well as uh, how to do a geographic uh, coordinate conversion that's necessary to get the latitude and longitude into the correct format. Before we begin that though, a couple of private messages I've had uh, have asked me how do I know which waypoints and which navigational aids are useful to add to the display and which ones can safely be removed without being able to interfere with uh, arrivals or departures happening. That's a great question. It's one I probably should have covered in the first tutorial, but I'll take care of that uh, lapse now by discussing how. So the basic idea is to look at the real approach plates and the real arrival plates and figure out what waypoints are used in real life uh, for the particular arrivals, departures, and approaches. And the best resource that there is to that is to bring up a browser and navigate your way to www.airnav.com. Airnav.com is a fantastic resource for aviation and it works great for us simmers as well. If you click on the airports tab and then click on KLAX or whichever airport you're interested in investigating. In this case, LAX is mostly what we care about. Um, there's a ton of information about the airport, which is really not particularly useful to us for the game, but is useful if you're a pilot. Uh, and then we scroll well down to the nearly the bottom of the page. We will find a listing of all of the stars, the standard terminal arrival uh, routes that there are, the instrument approach procedures themselves, and all of the departure procedures. A departure procedure is the correct name for what the game calls a SID, a standard instrument departure. SID was a valid term possibly 10 years ago it was used. It's been replaced now with the term departure procedure. They're really exactly the same thing. And uh, you'll notice a lot of familiar names in here. There's the uh, Holtz 9 and the Gorman 4 uh, and in fact all of the approaches which are departures which we see within the game have departure plates here that you can look at pictures for. All of the uh, instrument approaches are here. The two we care about are ILS runway 24 right and ILS runway 25 left. And then here are the uh, stars. And again, you'll see names that you're familiar with from the game, the Oldie 1 and the Lena 4 and so forth. So looking at these plates will tell us what waypoints are needed in order to fly them the way that they're intended. And so in particular, let's look here as an example at the uh, Sadie 6 arrival. Uh, one thing I'll just note here is that some of these have two pages. Uh, the first, in, that, in those cases, the first page is always going to be the diagram, and the second page is just some text descriptions of how that particular uh, arrival or uh, departure should be flown. That's always from the perspective of the pilot, and it's not uh, useful or meaningful at all with respect to the Tricon 2012 game, but you can look at them if you're interested, of course. So let's look at the Sadie 6. A lot of these come up sideways and you have to right click and then rotate them. These are PDFs that you can save to your local drive if you want to. Uh, in this particular case, we'll just make it a little bit bigger. And this will look vaguely familiar if you've already seen my tutorial on arrival management into uh, the Los Angeles area. Uh, the Sadie 6 has arrived out from over the ocean. Uh, in, into the uh, Ventura VOR and then make their way into the Sadie intersection. They also come from the north down from Avenal through Fillmore VOR and then down to Sadie intersection. They make their way to Baste to uh, Santa Monica Airport and then they get vectored out on this uh, in, in the uh, my tutorial I call it the 070 heading. The actual real heading is 068 degrees which you can use if you prefer at 5,000 feet. Uh, for the per distance that we're covering before we turn them into final, by the way, the dis difference between 069 and 070 is completely meaningless. 070 is a little bit easier to remember, and since it's the reciprocal heading of the runway, uh, which all the runway headings in LA are uh, almost 250 degrees, they're actually 249 degrees, um, 070 works fine. The uh, 
the uh, navigation aids and fixes of, that are important for this particular arrival then are the Ventura VOR, uh, which is definitely on the map in the game already, SADI intersection, which is in the database as it turns out, but is not displayed on the map, so that's one we definitely have to turn on for display purposes, based intersection, which, uh, which is on the map already, and the Santa Monica VOR, which also is on the map. So this is the answer of how we know which uh, approach fixes and which navigation aids are relevant and useful for uh, helping manage arrivals and landings in the game. Uh, let's look also at the runway 25 left uh, approach plate. Uh, this is what the uh, thing looks like. We'll zoom in just a little bit here. We can see that this has a whole bunch of approach fixes along the way. As uh, covered in the ILS uh, tutorial, each of these also corresponds to a particular altitude which is visible on the vertical profile down here. I won't review that again now, but uh, what is important are the actual fixes themselves. So we have Fueler and then further inside we have uh, Gate and Honda and Lima. And as we look at the game, uh, and the database and try to turn these fixes on, what we're going to find is these are not even in the database. So this is going to be part of the tutorial we'll do now as well, is not only show how to turn stuff on that uh, that is in the database but isn't displayed, we'll see how to add something brand new. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So we're going to go ahead and launch the Airspace Editor. Remember you have to run it as administrator and then we'll load the sector that we're interested in editing. In this case, it's uh, Los Angeles. Remember that you have to navigate your way to the whatever folder you installed Tracon 2012 into, and then find the sectors folder inside that. You'll find all these .asx files, and you can add the one that you care about. In this case, I'm opening the standard uh, Los Angeles sector as it comes with the game. So this is the editor screen now. This control lets us zoom in and out. I'll zoom out just a bit. Uh, this section down here controls what is displayed on the screen. If there's a check next to it, it's displayed. If there's not a check, it's not displayed. So we can turn off the uh, sector and center sector boundaries. And notice that even though everything is now turned off, we still have a bunch of blue waypoints on the screen. You can get rid of those by just clicking this Remove All Don't Hide buttons. That's just a special property that they've set on some of these uh, waypoints so that they won't be hidden even if they're uh, even if you clicked on the filters to remove them. Uh, and then the one thing that's left over that you can't remove is a, f is a flight trail of an airplane. This is a, r a remnant from the game itself. You can completely ignore it. It doesn't have anything to do with uh, what we're going to do for editing purposes. So what we care about initially here are uh, uh, waypoints. So we'll turn waypoints on. And uh, then we'll also turn on this Show True property, which filters out all of the ones that don't have a property called Show set to True. That'll make more sense in just a moment as we look at the individual waypoints themselves. We'll change the objects that we're editing to waypoints instead of uh, airports. And now this is a list in this list box down here of all the waypoints within this sector that the game knows about. These are initially in alphabet order, alphabetical order. And then uh, after you get through the Z's, you'll note there's a whole bunch more intersections which aren't in any kind of order at all. Um, so if you're trying to figure out whether a waypoint is in the game or not, you kind of have to do searching. But it turns out there's sort of a quick way to do that, which I'll show you in just a minute. So uh, in this particular case, we already learned that the SADI intersection is missing from the game, and we would like to add it. So let's find out if it's there. If we just click within the list box down here and then type the letter S, it will jump down to the beginning of the S's. And as it happens, SADI is the first intersection in the list. Looking down here within the custom parameters, we see there is a name custom parameter, but the one that we need to add in order to get it to appear is this one called show. And then set it to the value true. And as soon as we do that, it appears on our display. And it's really just as simple as that to get a waypoint which is not displayed but is in their database to appear on the map is just add this property called show, set it to the value true, and the waypoint will display on your screen. 
So now how about the opposite thing? How about if there's something on the screen that we don't want displayed? So in particular, uh, looking over here at the LAX uh, sort of approach corridor for the ILX, there's a waypoint called Downey. This is not an uh, actual useful uh, waypoint for either the ILS 25 left or the uh, uh, ILS 24 right approach, and it just clutters up the display, so let's remove it. So if I click on it, it turns yellow so that it, we can tell that it's being edited. Notice down here that the show property is present and it's set to the value true. I'm going to change it to false. You actually can change it to any value other than true or remove it completely and that will also cause it to not be displayed. But I just like to remind myself that it's a true false property and I'm going to, so I'm going to set it to false. You'll notice as soon as I changed it, it disappeared off the display and that's all that's necessary to either add something to the display that's in the database or remove it if it's not in the database. Now, how about uh, if we want to add um, waypoints that are not in the database? And in particular, in this case, there are um, the, the markers for the ILS 25 left approach are not um, only, not, not only are they not on the display, they're not in the database. While I'm here, I'm also just going to turn Bassett off because that's also not useful. So how do we do that? Well, uh, there's a little bit of research required in order to figure out what the uh, latitude and longitude of the waypoint are, but the fundamental idea here is that we're going to click the Add button, which causes this thing to say Set Me. That was we're going to use as the name of the intersection. And I happen to know that uh, one of the intersections uh, is Gate that's sort of the equivalent of the Mercy intersection but it's for runway 25 left instead of runway 24 right. Now uh, the altitude by the way you can just highlight that and hit the delete key it's not needed for uh, one of these waypoints. But what we do need to know is the latitude and the longitude and we need to know it in a decimal degree format. So note that the latitude here 33 degrees uh, is going to be the same whether it's in, in decimal degrees or in, in degrees and minutes and seconds, but the minutes and seconds part is represented as a decimal rather than as uh, two discrete values for minutes and seconds. And that's what most of the uh, research material is going to give you is the location of the latitude and longitude expressed in degrees, minutes, and seconds. So once we do find it, we're going to need to convert it into this format. So let's find out right away how to do that. So gate intersection is what we care about. We're going to go uh, over here and visit uh, airnav.com again. And this time we're going to go to the airspace fixes tab and type in gate as the name of uh, the fix that we care about. And right away it finds it and it gives us its latitude and its longitude. Uh, and notice that these are expressed in degrees, minutes, and seconds. 33 degrees, 58 minutes, uh, 0 0.19 seconds north uh, latitude, and uh, 118 degrees, 5 minutes, 30.97 seconds of west longitude. Hopefully I said latitude before, but if I didn't, that's what I meant, latitude and longitude. Now, to convert this into decimal degrees, uh, we need to find another website which will do that for us. There's a whole bunch of these. But here is one in particular, uh, appsalon.com, and then this URL. So you might want to write that down for your own use. Uh, it gives us a box to input the uh, coordinates in uh, degrees, minutes, seconds format. And then when we click the convert button, it'll change it to decimal degrees for us. So for this particular intersection, for gate, it's uh, 33 degrees, 58 minutes, and then 0 0.19 seconds of north latitude and then uh, 118 degrees, 5 minutes, 30.97 seconds of west uh, longitude. Click Convert, and now it gives us the values that we're going to need. Move this off the screen and move our editor back to be visible. So it's just really as simple as copying and pasting these values into the editor. and then setting the uh, these two parameters and now gate 
uh, appears on our uh, display. Now, just for uh, cosmetic purposes only, it doesn't affect the gameplay at all. Um, these these waypoints, uh, as they're displayed, are actually in real life quite close to each other because they're on parallel ILS uh, uh, localizers. But uh, it's kind of messy that they are um, uh, that they're not separated from each other. So I'm going to go ahead and make a slight adjustment in the uh, latitude value of gate intersection by putting in a smaller value here, the intersection uh, jumps a little bit to the south. If I was to put in a larger value here, it would actually move to the north. Now, we do want it to be at least roughly where it should be, so uh, 9.6 is a little bit too close, so we make it 9.5. That's uh, that's going to be fine. It still will give us the, uh, the reference point that we need within the game, and uh, it will um, uh, not affect the gameplay because even though it's not on the ILS, when you clear them for the ILS approach, it will uh, still fly it correctly. In fact, a pretty reasonable strategy and a thing that I do in my own version of this game is I move this just enough off the ILS, say a 3.94 degrees, that I can have planes proceed direct to gate that will not take them directly onto the ILS approach, but rather will take them very close to it and then once at gate, I can give them a heading of, say, 270 degrees and immediately clear them for the ILS approach for 25 left. And instead of being on the ILS and not taking the clearance, as you've all heard many times, it will say negative if they're directly on the runway heading. This will, in fact, have them slightly off the runway heading, but turn towards the localizer, and, uh, and they'll take the clearance nicely. So with both gate and mercy, it's uh, not really a bad idea to move them just a little bit off of the ILS uh, and away from the uh, localizer so that you can direct airplanes directly to those intersections then give them a little turn towards the localizer, clear them for the approach and they will take them. Also it visually separates it nicely on the screen. And uh, that's pretty much it then. You just you have to save your, uh, your database edits that you've made. You will need to give it a name. Uh, whatever name you give it will actually appear when you start the game so I just called it test sector if I start the game I will actually see a sector I can control called test sector and uh, that will be a copy of LAX that you can then fly and um, that uh, actually covers it now we've uh, seen how to display uh, a, a waypoint which was not on the screen but which is in the database how to remove something from the display and also how to add a waypoint which was not in the database at all by going out to airnav.com uh, and getting the uh, typing in the name of the waypoint in the airspace fixes, getting the latitude and longitude, uh, converting that using any site, this one in particular works uh, from degrees, minutes, seconds into decimal degrees, um, clicking add here to add the waypoint to the database, typing in the name of the uh, well, sorry, in this particular case, it was gate we added, typing in the name, typing in the name down here, setting the show property to true, and then saving your database. And that's all there is to it. Have fun with the game.